Joseph Michel Montgolfier and Jacques Etienne Montgolfier were the inventors of the Montgolfier style hot air balloon, globe aerostatic. The brothers succeeded in launching the first piloted ascent, carrying Etienne into the sky. Later, in December 1783, in recognition of their achievement, their father Pierre was elevated to the nobility and the hereditary appellation of de Montgolfier by King Louis XVI of France. Both of them were Freemasons in Les neuf sures Lodge in Paris. Early Years The brothers were born into a family of paper manufacturers in Anonay, in Ardèche, France. Their parents were Pierre Montgolfier, 1700-1793, and his wife, Anne Duret, 1701-1760, who had 16 children. Pierre established his eldest son, Raymond Montgolfier, later Raymond de Montgolfier, 1730-1772, as his successor. Joseph, the twelfth child, possessed a typical inventor's temperament a maverick and dreamer, and impractical in terms of business and personal affairs. Etienne had a much more even and business-like temperament. As the fifteenth child, and particularly troublesome to his elder siblings, he was sent to Paris to train as an architect. However, after the sudden and unexpected death of Raymond in 1772, he was recalled to Anona E to run the family business. In the subsequent ten years, Etienne applied his talent for technical innovation to the family business, paper making was a high-tech industry in the 18th century. He succeeded in incorporating the latest Dutch innovations of the day into the family mills. Early Experiments Of the two brothers, it was Joseph who first contemplated building machines as early as 1782 when he observed laundry drying over a fire incidentally form pockets that billowed upwards. Joseph made his first definitive experiments in November 1782 while living in the city of Avignon. He reported some years later that he was watching a fire one evening while contemplating one of the great military issues of the day an assault on the fortress of Gibraltar which had proved impregnable from both sea and land. Joseph mused on the possibility of an air assault using troops lifted by the same force that was lifting the embers from the fire. He believed that contained within the smoke was a special gas, which he called Montgolfier gas, with a special property he called levity. As a result of these musings, Joseph set about building a box-like chamber 1 times 1 times 1.3 m, 3 feet by by 4 feet out of very thin wood, and covering the sides and top with lightweight taffeta cloth. He crumpled and lit some paper under the bottom of the box. The contraption quickly lifted off its stand and collided with the ceiling. Joseph then recruited his brother to balloon building by writing, get in a supply of taffeta and of cordage, quickly, and you will see one of the most astonishing sights in the world. The two brothers then set about building a similar device, scaled up by three, so 27 times greater in volume. The lifting force was so great that they lost control of their craft on its very first test flight on December 14, 1782. The device floated nearly 2 kilometers, about 1.2 miles. It was destroyed after landing by the indiscretion of passers-by. Public Demonstrations The brothers decided to make a public demonstration of a balloon to establish their claim to its invention. They constructed a globe-shaped balloon of sackcloth with three thin layers of paper inside. The envelope could contain nearly 790 cubic meters, 28,000 cubic feet, of air and weighed 225 kilograms, 500 pounds. It was constructed of four pieces, the dome and three lateral bands, and held together by 1,800 buttons. A reinforcing fishnet of cord covered the outside of the envelope. On June 4, 1783, they flew this craft as their first public demonstration at Anona e in front of a group of dignitaries from the Etats Particuliers. Its flight covered 2 kilometers, 1.2 miles, lasted 10 minutes, and had an estimated altitude of 1,600-2,000 m, 5,200 to 6,600 feet. Word of their success quickly reached Paris. Etienne went to the capital to make further demonstrations and to solidify the brothers' claim to the invention of flight. Joseph, given his unkempt appearance and shyness, remained with the family. 
Atian was the epitome of sober virtues, modest in clothes and manner. In collaboration with the successful wallpaper manufacturer Jean Baptiste Revelon, Atien constructed an envelope of taffeta coated with a varnish of alum, which has fireproofing properties. The balloon was sky blue and decorated with golden flourishes, signs of the zodiac, and suns. The design showed the intervention of Revelon. The next test was on the 11th of September from the grounds of La Folie Titan, close to Revelon's house. There was some concern about the effects of flight into the upper atmosphere on living creatures. The king proposed to launch two convicted criminals, but it is most likely that the inventors decided to send a sheep, a duck, and a rooster aloft first. On the 19th of September 1783, the Aerostat Revelon was flown with the first living beings in a basket attached to the balloon, a sheep called Montasil, climbed to the sky, a duck and a rooster. The sheep was believed to have a reasonable approximation of human physiology. The duck was expected to be unharmed by being lifted aloft. It was included as a control for effects created by the aircraft rather than the altitude. The rooster was included as a further control as it was a bird that did not fly at high altitudes. This demonstration was performed before a crowd at the Royal Palace in Versailles, before King Louis XVI of France and Queen Marie Antoinette. The flight lasted approximately eight minutes, covered two miles, three kilometers, and obtained an altitude of about. The craft landed safely after flying. Piloted flight. With the successful demonstration at Versailles, and again in collaboration with Revelon, Etienne started building a balloon for the purpose of making flights with humans. The balloon was about 75 feet, 23 m, tall and about 50 feet, 15 m, in diameter. It had rich decorative touches supplied by Revelon. The color scheme was gold figures on a deep blue background. Fleur de Lis, signs of the zodiac, and suns with Louis XVI's face in the center interlaced with the royal monogram in the central section graced the majestic machine. Red and blue drapery and golden eagles were at the base of the balloon. It is fitting that Etienne Montgolfier was the first human to lift off the earth, making at least one tethered flight from the yard of the Revelon workshop in the Faubourg Saint Antoine. It was most likely on October 15, 1783. A little while later on that same day, Pilotre de Rozier became the second to ascend into the air, to an altitude of, which was the length of the tether. On November 21, 1783, the first free flight by humans was made by Pilotre, together with an army officer, the Marquis d'Arlens. The flight began from the grounds of the Chateau de la Mouette, close to the Bois de Boulogne, Park, in the western outskirts of Paris. They flew aloft about above Paris for a distance of 9 kilometers. After 25 minutes, the machine landed between the windmills, outside the city ramparts, on the Butte Auxiliary Calus. Enough fuel remained on board at the end of the flight to have allowed the balloon to fly four to five times as far. However, burning embers from the fire were scorching the balloon fabric and had to be dogged out with sponges. As it appeared it could destroy the balloon, Pilotra took off his coat to stop the fire. The early flights made a sensation. Numerous engravings commemorated the events. Chairs were designed with balloon backs, and mantel clocks were produced in enamel and gilt bronze replicas set with a dial in the balloon. One could buy crockery decorated with naive pictures of balloons. In early 1784 the Flesselies balloon, named after the unfortunate Jacques de Flesselis, later to be an early casualty at the Bastille, gave a rough landing to its passengers. In June 1784 the Gustave saw the first, singing, female aeronaut, Elizabeth Theobald. Competing Claims Some claim that the hot air balloon was invented some three years earlier by the Brazilian Portuguese priest Bartolomeu de Guzmão. A description of his invention was published in 1709. In Vienna, and another one that was lost was found in the Vatican in about 1917. However, this claim is not generally recognized by aviation historians outside the Portuguese-speaking community, in particular the Fédération Aeronautique Internationale. The Montgolfier Company The Montgolfier Company still exists in Anonai, Ardèche, France. In 1799, 
Etienne de Montgolfier died. His son-in-law, Barthélemy Baru de la Lombardier de Canson, 1774-1859, succeeded him as the head of the company, thanks to his marriage with Alexandrine de Montgolfier. The company became Montgolfier et Canson in 1801, then Canson Montgolfier in 1807. Nowadays, Canson still produces fine art papers, school drawing papers and digital fine art and photography papers and is sold in 120 countries.